Hello, everyone, and welcome to round 15 of ARL Season 6, PC Split 2. We are in India. We are in qualifying. I am Justin, and we have Miko. Hi. <laughs> and it is a wet qualifying session. It is not full wets, intermediate tires for this qualifying session, uh, but it is already raining, and... It's going to continue to rain throughout the entire session, I can tell you. We only have Miko's perspective on this, since I did not record my qualifying session. And this was an unexpected turn of events, the wet qualifying. <laughs> did, you, did you feel good about wet qualifying? Did you think you, that it boded well for you going into it? Uh, no, no, definitely not. We did uh, two really start before the this this uh, session started, and both were dry. And as as you can see, the <laughs> first disconnect again. But uh, definitely no, no, I wasn't too too confident on the wet. I wasn't very confident on the primes on the dry tire, so I wasn't a hundred percent sure if the wet conditions were gonna benefit me or not. So I was kind of going into it with an open mind. So here we go, start of the lap. I guess it was this a hot lap. Yeah, got this, some curves used up. Yeah, this was actually my. I didn't think this was going to be a good lap, but it was provisional pole at the time. Oh yeah. By half a half a second, five tenths up on Kikusara. Oh, Silver Arrow just replaced him. Yeah, this good was first corner. Yeah, this was really, really at the start of the session, so I thought the times would be tumbling anyway. So I just pushed for another lap. Certainly. And we got this really long, bumpy straight, saving some curves, going into the long corner at the end. Went a little wide. Yeah. yeah. Sticking in second gear using the rest of the curves half a tenth off of your previous lap yeah, very going nice going a bit wide on the exit up there not too bad though yeah good exit coming out of there as well that was turn nine and going into the long turn ten turn eleven combo good use of the curves keeping it inside the white lines and we're a tenth up on the previous still in pole position yeah just a little bit running wide and just the car pushing a bit a little bit under steering and there's me where I went off the track <laughs> yeah coming to the last sticking corner very nice on the last corner sticking it right around staying to the right and seven tenths up on your previous holy cow one second faster than silver arrow that's an incredible lap and yeah. that what that was your qualifying lap you didn't improve after that yeah, that was my qualifying lap and i think i ended up sixth sixth, sixth yes on yep yeah there we can see the results there we go yeah uh, mine was a uh, 34.382. I think possibly the big difference being that that corner at the end of the straight. Uh, yeah. I definitely got got a little a, a tighter line for that one. So we got dry conditions for the race, and I can't tell who this is. <laughs> uh, is this, this is you? This is my, me. Yeah, uh, you can see okay. the, you on the other side of the garage. So going with the normal strategy. Did you do cautious fuel or did you do normal fuel? Normal, normal. Normal, okay, okay. Yep, it, this is a track where it is a little bit difficult to burn off all of the fuel. So this uh, this might be our best qualifying to date in fourth and sixth. Yeah, I think so. It, this, is, this was my personal best qualifying. Pre uh, prior to this, I think my uh, best qualifying was only sixth. Five lights and we're away. Hussein uh, Kadwa getting uh, a little bit of a slow start there and battling with SHX a little bit and Zephyr's coming up my inside. Changing to my view, you guys are battling in the front there, I think. Taking the racing line as best I could, wow, and barely missing the front of your car. Yeah, Got a little Hussein nudge Kadwa. from 
Yeah, Hussein kind of was getting pushed very wide. Yeah. The, actually, he got pushed to the gravel on there. Him in uh, SHX. Yeah, yeah, I Mid think so. And Zephyr has gone a little bit wide into this turn and a little bit contact barely, there. not too much. All in good fun, and Miko is safely past him. And these these opening laps on the on the primes with the heavy fuel is are are difficult for sure, especially on a track this bumpy. Yeah, I was really struggling with the grip, as you can see, Zephyr coming with the inside. And that is that pass. is a tough place to pass. It's <laughs> yeah, difficult, because yeah. <laughs> uh, of course this next corner is a left hand corner. Yeah, going a little bit defensive. And yep, we're getting very out of shape on the on the right kink there. Hanging on to the position, I uh, I am pulling away a little bit at this point uh, with the battling. I'm pretty focused on just having a clean race, just hitting all my apexes and all that. Zephyr is still very close behind. Oh, he seems to have dropped back a little bit there though. And here we skip ahead to lap two. Oh nope, this is this is the same same lap, just from my perspective. Yeah. And I'm, I'm doing my best to keep up with Amstel. I'm trying, I'm trying to save Rich for the straightaways, as you can see here. See me going to Rich right as I come around this corner. And I'm using all of my curves for this straightaway. I, uh, I found that to be the fastest in practice, at least during the race itself. Maybe not so much during quali, where you're actually hitting the rev limiter at the end of the straight, but uh, with the full fuel and no DRS, uh, I, d I was finding that that was the way to go. Yeah, switched back to me, going very wide, and Zephyr, I think he got past, yes he did. Yep, Trying to hold yeah, racing off. genius, not too far yeah. behind. And Zephyr did not take that corner great, so you are right up on him now. Yeah, I think Zephyr is one of the only people in our, in our split who is actually racing with an Xbox controller. So he's doing remarkably well. Especially that. at a track like India, that is that is really amazing. I think if if everyone had been on controller, he would have been winning this race. <laughs> <laughs> and a big corner uh, cut there. Yeah. Probably not the fastest way around that corner. Yeah, I was almost losing the car. Or the oh, back end. getting a little squirrely. Yeah, hanging on to it though. Of course, no qualifying laps on these tires. Uh, yeah, because of yeah. the wet qualifying. Uh huh. Yeah. So these these are brand new tires. Racing Genius, it should be noted, is behind on the option tires. Uh, he didn't notice that it, the game had put him on the option tires, so he should be a good bit faster. It's a, it's a big difference on this track between the options and the primes. So really surprising that Racing Genius is having such a hard time getting past Miko here. Yeah. Locking up in the uh, first few corners, getting real out of shape, and Zephyr getting away, as you can see. Racing Building Genius. a little bit of a gap. Oh, Racing Genius up the inside. I tried to go a bit defensive and try the undercut. And oh, and Ra Racing Genius very wide there, very wide, getting grass on his tires, even though there is no actual grass there. It still puts grass on your tires. Here we, here we are at the end of lap three. DRS ha was activated at the beginning of last lap, which is uh, probably how Racing Genius got by Miko there. And Amstel does the fastest lap of a 131.833. Yes, you can see my best lap at this point was 133.4, so he's almost one and a half seconds faster than me. Very quick, very quick. My lap 3 was a 132.3, so mm, not far off, but the clean air is certainly helping. And here we got Miko with DRS on Racing Genius. On the slower tire, he's going to try around the outside. And here, oh, we're going to drag race to the, to the next corner here. And I'm Miko is... Leave room on the outside. Very nicely done. Very clean. Nice pass. Or nice defense. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking it on the next corners. And it looks like Racing Genius went a little wide there. So that, that'll give you a little bit of breathing room now to push. And here we skip ahead a little bit. And you are, you've are you closed the gap down now to Zephyr. This is very close. I imagine you'll be getting DRS coming on to this straight here. 
And there's the DRS activation. So coming up and to lap six. Not really a passing place here, but uh, no, Zephyr's no. going defensive anyway. Just trying to nice line up close. for the straight. Oh yeah, very nice. Setting setting it up for the next straight very well. Breaks a li li little early on yep. the corner, he so. Did good to stay out of his gearbox though. And the DRS activation is very long down. Here we go. There's the DRS activation. Yeah, very far using down. All, the all the curves. All the curves. And hitting top speed. Oh, oh, and locking. Oh, and we've, we've gone wide. Oh, and a little bit of contact with Zephyr there. And that's a loud yeah. racing genius by. I'm afraid so. Actually, I went to neutral on that corner, so uh, sw switching back to first gear made me go a little out of shape. I'm not sure if Zephyr hit me, but that was really a mistake of mine. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think the contact was catastrophic there, so no, uh, n no big issues. And we're back on board with Justin and coming around the penultimate corner. Oh, and Amstel's gotten a little squirrely there, and Amstel lost out big right there. And I can tell you, in hindsight, that is pretty much exactly what I was hoping for. And I've gotten DRS as well, so uh, this is this is going to help me pull the gap out as much as I can. Of course, the split times for me are not accurate. You'll notice up at the top left, it says Amstel is three tenths ahead of me. Yeah. And meanwhile, at the back, I'm still chasing Racing Genius as he got past on the last lap. Now his tires are going to start getting pretty worn here. He, this is lap seven now on the options. His his tires are going to be pretty worn worn here. So you guys are going to be pretty equal on speed, I'd imagine. Yeah. Pretty close at the slipstream. Not using, using most all of the, the curves. curves. Yeah, not even a curves. little. Going on the inside, and already passed, breaking at the 150 meter board. Leaving Very the nice. On the outside, just a little. Very bit. nice. Beautiful pass right there. I, that was. That, I mean, you let you left him room. You saved some curves just to really seal the deal after the corner. And your purple as well in that first sector, 1.4 seconds faster than the previous lap. So things are looking great right now. Got a little bit of a step out on the back end right there. Nothing too serious though, able to catch it. Yep. And back on board with Justin, with me. And we're on lap seven now. And I'm doing my best to try and pull away. I'm trying to get Amstel out of my DRS. Uh, trying to get him out of my DRS zone. And it is not going so well at the moment. He is pretty close behind me. It's been about a, uh, one lap since I was able to get past him because of that mistake. And putting in a 131.1, I believe that is a new PB for me. Yes, yep, it that is. certainly is. That is a new personal best for me. And going to be going to Rich. Oh, it's Smuffler. Miko does fastest lap of the race. 130.6, a half second faster than mine. Now, was that with DRS? Yeah, that was with DRS. Gotcha. So maybe even with double DRS on the both both of the yeah. straights. Amstel is very far back. No way. Yep, he's no chance of making a pass happen there. He's getting very close under braking, but did couldn't even couldn't even get alongside on in the DRS uh, DRS activation there. And back on board with Miko. Oh, it looks like Zephyr's gone wide. Yeah, he has. I'm not sure I can pass him here. Yeah, I'm too far back. But that's allowed me to close him down. Try and set it up for the for the DRS zone. Oh, Whoa. cut in the corner. Oh, Getting really just wide. barely, barely hanging on to it. And Zephyr as well, going heavily on the curbs on there. Yeah, skipping one lap then. We're on lap nine, so about one third of the race r uh, race passed now. And you are seven tenths behind Zephyr currently with about a third of your curves and you're gonna be getting DRS here. So I imagine you are, you are definitely setting him up for a pass right now. Gonna use the DRS to try and get nice and close for the end of this yeah. straight. Zephyr go defensive. Am still fastest lap. Little bump. And oh, who got DRS? 
Yeah. Time to play the Who Got DRS game here. Oh, you got a much better exit coming out of that corner. Yeah, I think it's actually against the rules to like wait for the other other person to cross the cross the DRS uh, Interesting. detection. So I think Zephyr was trying trying that a little bit there, but I got the pass doesn't, done. Doesn't appear to have been successful for Zephyr as you s maintain that position. And you are uh, seven seconds though behind Amstel. Certainly, the battling has uh, paid its or uh, paid its price, and you are quite a bit away behind Amstel and myself at the moment. Yeah, that's true. You can see Hussein Card were doing the fastest lap. Of course, he had he has had a terrible race going uh, out on the. I think now he pit. Very early, I believe, right? Yeah, he must have because he went off, I think, in the in the first sector, just on the first lap. Really yeah. unfortunate, uh, with such a high qualifying position as well. Hussein, Hussein qualifying second, only six one hundredths off of pole position. Amstel. Here we go then. Yeah. On board, fake ghost pirate or just and as well. <laughs> <laughs> and and just like before, just trying to keep Amstel out of my DRS, not succeeding. He will have DRS on me on this lap, using all of my curves, rich mixture. And not I can not I can, looking back though. Right. Yeah. I, I I tend not to look back unless I'm seeing arrows. Uh, is is usually what what I go for. Probably not the best choice, but uh, that is that is my habit. And one tenth up on my previous lap. And unfortunately, because of the time issue up at the top left where it says Amstel is 1.2 seconds ahead of me instead of behind me, I have no idea when I'm actually getting him out of my DRS range. I don't know if he's 9 tenths uh, behind me, 1.1 seconds, if he's 4 tenths, I, I just, I have no idea. And so, but I'm pushing as hard as I can, trying to keep it clean. Yeah, going a bit wide on the... Yep. Missed the apex a little bit on that one, but I did bring it back to the inside to try and optimize my entry for the following corner. Getting a little bit on the curbs, taking a nice line through that final corner. As we skip to lap 17, running And your DRS me. is broken. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it appears so. And I went really a little wide. wide. Yeah, really wide on that pit entry. I think that's cost me at least maybe a second. Yep, I, th I think the time difference on our in laps was about a second. Yeah, switching, yep. up to, of course, to the option tire. Yep. The yellow uh, marked. Th this was the lap when tire. most people were, were going on the soft tire, correct? Most people were pitting at the end of lap 17 for the soft tire, correct? I think so. Yeah, I, I think I may have been the only person to go until until 18. Uh, but in practice, I was a little bit faster on the primes than than you were, Miko, and you were a little bit faster on the options. So I think it it only made sense that you would do one extra lap on the options and I would do one extra lap on the primes. I think and I think that was a good choice. Yeah, I don't think one lap would make a huge difference anyway, at least in this part of the. If this part of the race because you're so far ahead at this point. Exactly, exactly. It did play out very well. And Amstel, it should be mentioned, attempted a huge undercut. He pipped for the options on lap 15, three laps before me. And I was a bit concerned that he would uh, successfully undercut me, uh, as Amstel does the fastest lap of the race, as, uh, as you just saw. And uh, l luckily that was not the case, though. Uh, I do believe Amstel made a mistake on lap 15 uh, when he was pitting, uh, which gave me enough enough room to tr to maintain that lead. Yeah, you can see in the minimap the difference. I think is about maybe three or four seconds to to Amstel. I think that's about accurate. It, it, it was about seven seconds to you, and it looks like he's about half that to me. So yeah, I'd say about three or four seconds back. Uh, it, that gap was bigger uh, before before the pits, uh, uh, before he pit on lap 15. It was bigger than that, so he, he has closed that gap down a bit. But uh, I am running on full rich for this entire lap, not something I do normally. Uh, I'm not the type of driver to run rich for an entire lap, uh, typically. But uh, at this track where it's it's tough burning off fuel, I wanted to do my out lap on Rich for the entire time, which you can see I've done there. 
and the next lap is well on Rich the entire time. Yeah, and you can see the gap from Amstel to Smuffler, that's me, and uh, you can see that it's about 10 seconds, so Amstel has gained a lot. We'll get a during split time there, yep, 10.0 seconds exactly, actually. And, and Amstel again, fastest lap. Uh huh. Getting a bit, a little out of shape on the exit of turn one, and getting on the curb on the outside, so locking up, not very tidy. Could have been worse, but not not too bad. And it looks like we're we're actually uh, both doing quite well on fuel consumption. Uh, last I checked, I was on about plus two laps of fuel, uh, and you are on plus two laps of fuel as well. Uh, so fuel consumption definitely does not seem to be a problem for us at all in this race. No, no, definitely it doesn't. You can, uh, I'd say the, those two extra laps would probably do, if you're using it only on the main straight, it would probably be enough for the whole of the remaining of the race. Absolutely, absolutely. Probably even the start-finish straight as well, because it's cause yeah. that's such a short straight. And Miko is purple after sector two, 1.6 seconds up on your previous, and that is a and and that previous is the 130.1 up there. So you're you're on track here for a 28.5, uh, which would definitely be the fastest lap of the race by at least a couple of tenths at this point. And uh, fake ghost pirate, uh, that's me, does a 128.7, and Miko beats that by two tenths. Wow. Yeah, you can see the time difference to Amstel. I catched him. Almost seven half a tenths. second. Amazing, yeah. amazing. It really closing that down. And I can tell you, at this point in the race, that is exactly what I was hoping for. I was hoping that you were just going to come up behind him and just bug him and just uh, make it an easy race for me. And here we skip ahead to lap 29. Not a lot going on. Uh, put uh, everyone was putting in some good laps. Uh, Miko consistently in the 28s, aside from a couple laps on 24 and 25. And uh, myself, Justin, uh, it's staying in the 28s as well, except for lap 23. I put in a 29.0 there. And I actually had enough fuel at this point to run rich for the entire last lap. Uh, and I am, I am pushing for fastest lap right now. Uh, prior to this race, I had never gotten fastest lap at, at any of the 14 previous races, so that, that was a big goal of mine. You can see me going to lean here for this corner, uh, and then going right back into Rich, just trying to keep the Rich fuel for as much of the lap as possible. And I'm actually 8 one hundredths off of my previous lap. Still pushing very hard though, running uh, Rich fuel for the whole lap. I am on optimal, but uh, I'm still pretty far from being at minus one, so I'm pretty comfortable on the fuel. Yeah, the tires, of course, being 12 laps old at this stage. And I knew that. I, I knew that with so, pitting so late, I had a great opportunity to potentially set fast this lap on, the, on this last lap here. And so that's that's exactly what I'm going for right now. And yeah. last not corners. something I would have predicted. <laughs> Coming up to the last corner. To the, the finish very tight finishing line. line. Not your first victory of the season. Second victory. Oh, second victory. Uh -huh. First dry victory, though. That's my first dry race win and my first fastest lap as well. Very proud of both of those. This race was also my highest qualifying position. Uh, qualifying in fourth is my best qualifying so to date. To date. And Miko crosses 16 seconds behind. Uh, SHX was 37 seconds back, but that's with a 10 second penalty that probably wasn't deserved. So he was 27 seconds back, a uh, uh, full 11 seconds behind Miko there. Yeah. Definitely our best race. <laughs> yeah, we our did have a double podium at uh, Malaysia at the start of the season. So this but was that was second and third, and this yeah, one was first true. and that's third. True. Best, best result to date. And of course, my line is a little bit messed up there. Uh, you'll notice for the first uh, 14 or 15 laps, Amstel's line is higher. That's because of the gap uh, issue that, that I have. And what this means in the points, I have moved ahead of Racing Genius uh, and taken second place in the points now, 38 uh, back to uh, 38 to Verney, which means I need to score 13 points more than him per race 
for the last three races. And uh, you passed Linios as well, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, so you're you're up into sixth now? I believe so, yeah. And yep, you sure are. So guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.